Welcome to Miracles in the Book of Acts with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our topic today is Miracles in Corinth. In last week's program, we learned how Paul brought the gospel to Athens. Luke reported that some men joined Paul and believed, among whom were also Diocenes the Aeropagite and a woman named Damaris and a few others with them. Acts chapter 17, verse 34. Paul was given the unusual opportunity to present the gospel to the most intellectual people of the city in a place referred to as Mars Hill. While Paul was able to fully defend the message Jesus preached, it became clear that winning an argument is not enough to lead people to Jesus. Intellectuals need more than an argument. They need a demonstration of the power of Jesus to heal and to deliver. I suggested that from this point on, Paul understood that preaching must always be accompanied by the power of God to heal and to deliver. I propose that as Paul traveled from Athens to Corinth, he had a long time to reflect on the effectiveness of his ministry in Athens. As a Pharisee and highly educated person, Paul would have been most comfortable in Athens and the least comfortable in the sinful city of Corinth. It seems to me that as Paul walked to Corinth, Holy Spirit reminded him of how Jesus attracted people to his message. Jesus did not use clever arguments. He simply demonstrated the power of God through healing people who had all kinds of diseases. Paul reaped little fruit in Athens compared to the massive harvest he reaped in Corinth. This points out that defending our faith intellectually is not as important as demonstrating the power of our faith through lives being changed and healed. It is possible that this shift in approach is found in statements Paul made when he wrote to the Corinthians. He said, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. My speech and my message were not plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. Notice that Paul switched from a complex defense of Christianity to a simple demonstration of the power of God. Would you also notice with me that Paul expressed fear? He confessed, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and much trembling. Now, besides the sinfulness of the city of Corinth, Paul approached the city at a critical moment in history. He visited Corinth in AD 51, and we know from an inscription in Delphi that is exactly when Galileo was the governor of Corinth. That is also the year the Pan-Hellenic Ismanian Games were held in the sanctuary of Poseidon near Corinth. Now, during the original Olympic Games, the population of Corinth expanded from 100,000 people to over 500,000 people. And Corinth was one of the most important cities in the northern rim of the Mediterranean Sea. The east-west shipping lanes converged on the three ports associated with the city of Corinth. And if the gospel was to be fully preached in Europe, it was essential for the gospel to be successful in Corinth. If the gospel could change the hearts and minds of the Corinthians, it could be preached anywhere. Now, the first miracle in the city of Corinth was that God moved a prominent couple who were already followers of Jesus from Rome to Corinth, a fascinating story in itself. Their names are Priscilla and Aquila. And Paul became business partners with them, supplying tents to the thousands of visitors who flooded into Corinth for the Olympic Games. And while there was much excitement in the city, as people heard about the resurrection of Jesus, Paul became more and more afraid. He was ministering without his team because Timothy and Silas were still in Berea and not yet joined Paul in Corinth. And things reached the point where Paul himself 
needed a miracle. Luke says, one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid, but keep on speaking and do not be silent. Acts chapter 18 and verse 9. God could not do what he wanted to do in Corinth until Paul's fears were broken. Paul woke up the next morning a changed person. His fears were gone. Some followers of Jesus listening to this message are ministering in fear, and God cannot do through you what he wants to do through your ministry until your fear is broken. God wants to break your fear right now, just like he broke Paul's fears. One time I prayed for a lady carrying fear because of where she was called to share the message of Jesus. I commanded her fear to leave. And later she told me, as I commanded her fear to go, she felt her fear leave like a bolt coming out the back of her neck. What a great story. I invite you to hold your fears in your hand as I pray over you. Fear go right now in the name of Jesus. Feel the spirit of boldness coming upon you as your fear leaves. If you felt fear leaving you, write to me and tell me what Jesus has just done for you. Jesus continued by saying to Paul, I am with you, and no one is going to attack you to harm you because I have many people in the city. Acts chapter 18 and verse 10. After Paul was set free from fear, people from every level of society in Corinth became followers of Jesus. And God has many people in your city that he wants to reach. And not long after Paul's encounter with Jesus, Silas and Timothy arrived in the city. And that is when the message of Jesus began to spread rapidly in the city. For the first time, Paul and his team were able to stay in one place for at least 18 months. And just like Jesus said, many people became followers of Jesus. This included the synagogue leader and his family who followed Jesus. Many Roman citizens followed Jesus. Erastus, the treasurer of the city of Corinth, followed Jesus. In another miracle, a religious leader tried to stop Paul from preaching by taking him to court, saying what he was doing was illegal. But this move backfired because Governor Galeo ruled in Paul's favor, a powerful demonstration that God knows how to use an unrighteous judge to make a righteous decision, and in this case, without Paul saying one single word. This ruling helped Paul whenever he faced civil court court cases in other places. And in the end, the one who took him to court, he too became a follower of Jesus. Prostitutes and sinners in Corinth turned to Jesus for salvation. And all this happened because Paul demonstrated that the gospel was powerful enough to save people, powerful enough to heal people, and powerful enough to set people free from addictions. You might ask, how do I know that Paul healed people in Corinth? Paul taught the Corinthians about the gifts of healing, working of miracles, and words of knowledge. And these gifts cannot be taught without being demonstrated. So this is why Paul could say, could say, be imitators of me as I am of Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. He said, I am doing what Christ did, and I want you to learn to do what Christ did by imitating me. I can't tell you why Luke did not write about specific miracles that happened in Corinth, but I can tell you that Paul confirmed that healing happened in Corinth. He said, the signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, with signs and wonders and mighty works. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11 and 12. Signs and wonders and mighty works launched the church in Jerusalem, and they are still launching churches all over the world today. Paul said to the Corinthians, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given to you, that in every way you were enriched in Jesus, in all speech and knowledge, 
And even in the testimony of Christ, it was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any gift. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 7. Paul imparted to the Corinthians all of the gifts, including healings, miracles, and words of knowledge. Paul wrote to the Corinthians about the power of the gospel many times. He used the power 12 times in 1 Corinthians, and in 2 Corinthians he used, talked about the power of God seven times. And Paul would say things like, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but power. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. Paul encouraged the Corinthians to continue ministering the way he taught them to minister. He said, I urge you then, be imitators of me. And that is why I sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach them everywhere in every church. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Paul clearly said, I've taught the followers of Jesus in all the churches I plant how to heal. In Corinthians, you are no different. I've personally taught you how to heal, so keep doing it and don't stop. Now, Paul had trained Timothy how to heal, and healing was so important that Paul sent Timothy from Ephesus back to Corinth to remind them of my ways in Christ as I teach them everywhere in every church. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Paul taught healing in every church. This is why Paul could say, my message and my preaching were not used with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. So who is ready to experience a demonstration of the Spirit's power? If you need a miracle, now is your moment. I release a wave of healing to all who are listening. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears hear. Lame get up and walk. Cancers go in the name of Jesus. Touch the place where you're hurting or you have a disease. I command that place to be healed. And I command your, play, your pain to go right now. You see, Jesus died not only for our sins to be forgiven. He died for diseases to be healed. That is why Paul could say, Christ sent me to preach the gospel, not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17. I've just released to you the power of God through the cross of Christ. If you received a touch from Jesus, write to me and let me know what God has just done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying miracles in the book of Acts. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.